Hello, good evening, and welcome to Practical Christianity Bible Study. My name is Tunde Disu, and thank you for being part of tonight's program. On today's program, we are starting a new series. As you know, we've just concluded the series on healing is your birthright. But on today's program, we are starting on another series, and the series title is the fruits of the spirit the fruits of the spirit bible tells us that god is spirit and those that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth and when god created you and i he didn't create this physical body he created a spirit he gave that spirit a soul and put the soul in a body and so that is who we are we are a, a three-part being where spirit we have a soul and we live in a body so therefore if we or since we are spirit then whatever we produce whatever comes out of us must be in line with the spirit that we are just like a goat cannot give birth to a turtle and a dog cannot give birth to a rabbit everything will produce after its own kind so because we are spirit therefore the fruits the things that comes out of us what we produce what we become what we manifest must be spirit filled spirit led spirit being and spirit uh, dictate and so we're going to be looking at the fruits of the spirit in other words we're going to be looking at your fruit and my fruit the type of fruit that we should produce the type of fruit that when people see then they will know that we are of god we are born of god we are god's children we are made in his likeness and in his image we are the exact replica of god because our father god is spirit so when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, the first place to look at is the letter of Apostle Paul to the church, the, the church in, in, in Galatia. And so we'll be looking at Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to verse 23. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23, which says that, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. What does that really mean? Simply put, your life and my life should be producing what, you, what, what comes out of you and I as the child of, as children of God, as people born of spirit, as spirit being, what should come out of us, the fruits that we should produce, are these nine specific, unique uh, elements that the, that the Apostle Paul was writing about. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance those are the fruits of the spirit and then he went on to say let me tell you if you operate in these nine elements in this nine arena if your life produces this nine elements there is no law that can hold you there is no no rules and regulation that can hold you bound a fruit primarily is a product of a seed. You cannot have fruits without seed, even though the fruit of itself carries within itself its own seed, but it starts with a seed. A fruit is a product of a seed that was planted and over time it, it germinated, it grew, it matured, and then it started to produce fruits. But fruits, fruit production in itself 
the production of fruits by that tree in itself, it's not the end of the process. It's not the ultimate manifestation of the life of that tree. Because the, pro the, the, the fruits that is produced also need time to mature, also need time to the, the time, the right environment, the right temperature, the right climate for it to, to ripe. For, for it to be harvested, for it to be consumed and bring fulfillment to the lives of those that partake of that fruit until that point is attained. The tree that produces the fruits and the fruit that is produced, they have not fulfilled their purpose. So it starts with a seed being planted that seed is nurtured, is, that seed grows into a tree, and the tree starts to produce flowers and leaves, and then at some point starts to produce fruits. That is not the end product. That is not the ultimate aim. That is not the finality of the essence of that tree. That Those fruits that are produced, they too have to mature, to grow to the right size, they then have to ripe or, or, or get to a point where they are no longer sour, they are edible, they are ready to be eaten. Do you know that there are some fruits? Even while they are on the tree, if they are not ready to be consumed, they can be poisonous because they are not ready to be consumed. But when the fruits are now ripe and they are harvested and people start to consume them, animals start to consume them and it is bringing benefits to their bodies, to, their, to, to them, they are they're receiving some enjoyment, some nutrients, some strength, some health out of those fruits. Now the, the tree and the fruit are fulfilling the divine purpose. How, when, how does that concern you and I? Simply put, it is one thing for us to be spirit being, to have been bought of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. It's one thing for us to, to have trees and branches and flowers and leaves and even start to yield to produce some fruits. Unfortunately for us as Christians, most of us, we think the production of fruits is the ultimate aim, is the ultimate goal for our lives. And so we stop. We pack up. We sit at the point of seed or fruit producing, and we don't go further than that. But your life and my life is meaningless. They are of no use until your life and my life starts to affect somebody else. Until what comes out of you and what comes out of me starts to be a blessing to other people. It is therefore pertinent. It is of paramount importance, therefore, that we having the seed of God in us as children of God, we must not only profess that we have the seed of God, we must not only profess that we are fruit bearers as we are, but we must work towards our seed producing fruits and those fruits being able to impact and be a blessing to others so that they too can then declare, I thank God for your life. Through you, God has shown his favor towards me. I have seen the hand of God in my life because you are alive. I thank God that you are in my life because my life has become better by your involvement in me and with me. That is when your fruits start to yield or to be of benefit 
to anybody. The Gospel of Luke chapter 6 verse 45 tells us, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. What is he saying? It's okay. It is one thing for you and I to proclaim, I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I'm an excellent person. I'm a law-abiding citizen. And this and this and that. That's, that's wonderful. But what are you producing? What is coming out of you and who is that that is coming out of you affecting and impacting and blessing and making whole, making better, making happy, bringing them joy, peace, wholeness. Who are you with your life, with the seed that you carry and the fruit that you are producing? Who is it touching? The deposit in your heart. The deposit of the word of God. The incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. When that is deposited in your heart, that is what will determine the kind of fruit, the type of fruits, and the quality of fruit that will come out of your life and out of your mouth. That is why many Christians, born again, Bible believing, preaching, teaching, performing oneness, doing great things. But when you hear what comes out of their mouth, when you observe their lifestyle, when you go get closer to them, you start seeing arrows and venoms. And you start to ask, where is this coming from? They are coming from the abundance of his heart. Oh, yes, he's producing fruit. Oh, yes, he's producing fruit. The question is, of what benefits are those fruits? The deposit of the word of God in your heart is what would, be, what would what will bring forth good fruits out of you. So don't be concerned primarily with what fruits you are producing. Oh, anybody can, can, can fake it. Anybody can talk it. Anybody can declare it. Anybody can say those things. The question is, it, the, the issue rather is not it's not to be bothered, not to be concerned and consumed and totally focused on the fruit that you are producing in your life and in your mouth. The right place to pay attention to. The place where you should be mindful of. The place where you should guard with all diligence is the seed that is being planted in your heart. Because it is out of the abundance of that heart that your mouth will speak and your lifestyle will demonstrate. If the seed that is going inside of you is corrupt, if the seed that is going inside of you is, is, is defective, if the seed that is going inside of you has been eaten by, by insects and weasels and all of that, guess what? You are going to produce fruits, but they will be defect. They will be defective in one form or another. And because of that defect, they will not be of benefit to anybody. If the seed is corrupt, if the seed is worldly, if the seed is contrary to the word of God, the fruit that will be produced will be just like father like son. The measure of the quality of your seed is the fruit that is produced afterwards. 
don't 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 show me don't tell me about how good your seed is let's just look at the fruits and let's see who is being blessed by your fruits what impact is your fruit having and making in the lives of others we as children of god we are born of incorruptible seed but in most cases this seed are contaminated during the process of transforming from the seed to producing the fruit the seed in itself is 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 perfect the seed of its own is is just great the quality and everything is wonderful but the moment you plant the seed in the soil and it starts to germinate and grow, you and I know fully well there are other things that will start to affect and effect and attack and combine and aid and try to distract and disrupt that seed from producing. It is in that process that contamination comes in. So that the fruit that is eventually seen does not reflect the quality of the seed that was planted. In your life and my life as Christians, that contamination, those contaminating uh, 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 elements and, 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 and events and things that contaminate your seed from producing maximally after the quality of this good seed that was planted in you is religion. It's on renewed mind. It's tradition. It's the practices. It's your, 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 your way of thinking and doing that is not in line with the word of God. No wonder the Gospel of Mark chapter 7 verse 13 tells us, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. What is he saying? The word of God has enough power in itself to produce maximally, to get the result that is desired, to arrive at the destination that it is set. But your tradition, your all renewed mind, your practices, your, 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 your erroneous doctrines are the things that are affecting the quality of the word in your life, thereby affecting the quality of the fruits that your life produces. The tradition the practices, the doctrines that are fashioned after the flesh by the law rather than after the spirit, by love and grace are the things that are corrupting the fruits that you are producing. No wonder Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians, was describing to them by comparing the differences between being led by the flesh and living in the newness of your spirit as a spirit being through the gift of Jesus Christ. He talked to them in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. He said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What was he saying? You have received this good seed. You have received this incorruptible seed into your life. You are born out of the, out of the spirit of God. The Bible said he breathed the breath of life into the clay. And the clay became a living soul. This essence of God was, was released into you. He created you in his likeness and in his image as a spirit being. 
And when man lost that connection through the fall of Adam, Jesus came and restored the, the connection. And so Apostle Paul is telling the Galatians, and by extension, you and I today, he's saying, stand fast. Stand your ground. Dig your heels in, as it were, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free. Free from what? Free from the yoke and the bondage of law and order, of the bondage of tradition and of the bondage of all renewed mind. No, stand your ground. So that you don't lose the liberty that you have already received. Stand your ground and make sure that the freedom that you have received, the incorruptible seed that has been planted in you, is not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, of laws, of do's and don'ts. Be resolute. Refuse to be persuaded otherwise. Hold your ground and do not compromise your faith which has given you such a liberty. No. No. Refuse to be subjected to any other yoke of slavery. I don't care from whom it is coming. I don't care who is preaching it and telling you and teaching it. If it is not in line with the word of God, it is a tradition and it will make the word of God of no effect in your life. refuse to be to be held down again by any any yoke of slavery by trying to live a spiritual life through the dictates of the flesh and the law it won't work it can never work because you are not party to that covenant no more He said, curse is every man that was hung, that is hung on the tree, so that you and I can receive the blessing of Abraham. What is the blessing of Abraham? That you are free. You are justified. God gave him the, the, the right, his righteousness. That's what you and I have become partaker of. Why then should we, why then would we, why then do we then yield that freedom to tradition, to law, to try to fulfill a divine mandate with, 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 with the arms of flesh? It will never work. Be careful. We all need to be careful as born-again Christians. Because being born again does not mean your old ways have suddenly just disappeared. No. What, what became born again is your spirit. You have to now walk through your newness, your new life in God by deliberately Bringing back to line up with your new birth spirit, every or the other two aspects of your being, your soul and your body, they also then have to come in line with the newness of your spirit. And the Bible tells us how to do that in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It said, I beg of you, please, brothers, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I mean, we could spend a whole hour just on that one verse. He, he, he said, I beg you. I, I take God beg you, as they say in Benin. I take God beg you. This is what you, you need to do. Present your body as a living sacrifice so that it is acceptable by God because that's your reasonable service. 
That's the least you are expected to do. And then he went on to tell us how to do it. He said, and be not conformed to this world. Don't try to live like the world. Don't try to emulate the world. Don't try to, to, to be drawn and lured into the, the world the ways. No, he said, no, tra be transformed. Be metamorphosized, be translated, be promoted, become a new, a new being by the renewing of your mind. The word renewing there is just say change your mind. Change your mind. But you see, what we try to do as Christians, and let me finish this before I... How do you renew your mind? He said, that you may prove that which is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew your mind by the word of God. But what we try to do is to, we try to renew our mind by trying to keep to the laws. But we try to renew our mind by trying not to do this and not to go there and not to eat this and not to smell that and not to touch this. For as long as we continue along those lines, we will continuously fail woefully in coming to a point where our, our, our body becomes a living sacrifice that is acceptable to God. Because there is no power in this flesh to fulfill the law. None. Not one. Not the strongest, not the greatest, not the most anointed man or woman you can think of has the power in these arms of flesh to fulfill the law. But we are born again. Bible carrying and tongue speaking and church going. And yet we live as if we're still in Leviticus. We live as if we're still under the law. Because that is what we hear every day. Don't do this. You can't do that. You can't say that. You can't. You know, it's do's and don'ts. Rules and regulations. It's not surprising that people are not manifesting the fruits of the spirit. Which should be our natural inclination. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing and hearing, it is what you are hearing day in day out that will shape what comes out of your life. No, Apostle Paul is telling us, don't do that. Refuse to yield this liberty that you have received to any doctrine, any, any yoke of bondage that is trying to put you back into what you've been delivered from. The biggest responsibility for you and I as born-again Christians, the biggest responsibility that we have is to work on renewing our minds. And as we do that, oh, this one just hits me like a ton of bricks this afternoon. As we renew our mind, as we work and, 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 and allow the word of God, which is the water of God, to wash us and cleanse us and, re, and just give us the newness from the inside. As we do that, guess what will happen? All those are fruits that are hanging on the trees and they are not maturing. And they are not ripening, and they are not sweetened, and they are not ready for harvest. As we renew our minds by the word of the living God, those fruits will start to ripe. They will start to mature. They will start to smell. Mm. They will start to look like you need to lay hands on this. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this, this fruit. And the world around us will start to perceive the aroma of the fullness of, of our God. They will start to taste the sweetness of our God. And then it will be fulfilled. What the Bible said, that on that day, seven Jews will lay, seven men will lay hold of, a, of, of the skirt of, or the trousers of, of a Christian and say, I want to know your God. Because the fruits 
that your life is producing. They are not just hanging green and, and ugly on the trees. No, they are hanging. They are ready. They are ripe. They are mature. They smell good. They taste wonderful. People want to lay hold of it. And now your fruits are being a blessing to others. In order to produce fruits worthy of the seed of the spirit that we are and we carry, we must recognize that trying to fulfill the law is fertile. It's a failure in attempt. Because even when you think you fulfilled all of them, if you fail in one, you failed all of them. So what are you going to do? Okay, you stop being, uh, you stop gossiping. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't do this. You don't do this. Then one day you just get angry, and in your anger you said something, and everything that you have you have accumulated and and achieved psh, into smoke, and then you start all over again. What slavery is that? But since you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Since you and I are under the new dispensation of love and grace, Apostle Paul just bring all the laws and tie them up in one word. Love. Love. Galatians chapter 4 verse 14 tells us, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Finish. One word. Isn't God good? Isn't God such a merciful father? Isn't God such a great, great lover? Rather than us striving and trying and killing ourselves, trying to maintain the Sabbath and the law of the Passover and the law of the unleavened bread and the law of the deeds, and the, he just rounded it up in one thing love. He rounded it all up in one word love. For all the law, all of them, Known and unknown, seen and invisible. All the laws are fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Father, thank you. You saw me. You knew me. My inadequacies are not hidden from you. My inability is exposed to you. You created me and you know I am just nothing but a clay that you have given your life, your spirit to. And so you delivered me from trying, from attempting, from wanting to fulfill everything in just one word, love. We are still on the topic, fruits of the Spirit. Since the essence of bearing fruit is not just to show, say, oh, look at my fruit. They're, oh, they're so wonderful. No, the essence of bearing fruit is to be a blessing to others. That's it. The mango tree, that orange tree, that banana tree, that cashew tree, that guava tree, or whatever other tree, or anything that produces fruit, they don't, there is no benefit to them from the fruit they produce. Have you ever seen a mango tree say, I need to eat some of this mango myself. After all, I produce them. Even when they fall down right by its root, they just there, they will rot away. No, the fruits of any tree, they are for the benefit of others, not the tree that is producing it. Therefore, your life and my life 
the essence of our lives, the essence of our being, the reason you and I are still breathing today is so that our lives can impact and be a blessing to others. And the greatest assignment that you and I have is to set our minds in ensuring that come rain, come sun, come high water or no river, my life must be a blessing, must impact somebody, must touch somebody, must add value to somebody. Because it's only in that that I'm bearing fruit, good fruit. Because Apostle Paul said, the enablement to do that, the ability to do that, the requirement to do that, the fulfillment of that assignment is, 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 is wrapped up in love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, when you look at the, 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 the Bible, It started with Moses giving the Ten Commandments. And so for, for so many years, everybody were living under the Ten Commandments. And then one day, Jesus showed up on the scene. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 to 39, he wrapped up the Ten Commandments into two. His disciples came to him and they said, Master, which is the greatest, which is the great commandment in the law? In, this, in other words, what is that one thing that once we've done it, every law is fulfilled? What is that one law that is the biggest and the highest, the most powerful, the greatest of them all? What is it? So that we might as well just concentrate on that. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 36 to 39. The disciples said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the Ten Commandments and all the laws that it pertains to is wrapped up into love God, love your neighbor. And then Apostle Paul, by divine inspiration, condensed all of that to one. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. You see, the principle drive the horsepower behind all that God is doing, has ever done, and will continue to do for man. The, 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 the force behind all of them is one singular force. Love. 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 If the church if the body of Christ will just wake up and recognize and understand this one, one thing, the rest of the story. And that is one of the reasons behind my new book. It's available now on Amazon. It's called Understanding the True Nature of God. When you understand who God is, when you know who God is, not know him because you are born again, not know him because you go to church. No, when you know him for who he is, you realize that, you realize that everything that we, we, we kill ourselves about and they really don't. They're neither here nor there as far as God is concerned. Because the only force, the only thing, the essence of 
who God is, what God is, how God is, where God is, when God is, is one word, love. Love. That's why the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16 said, tells us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He did all of that. He gave his son, his only begotten son, because he loved you and I. I said that's not enough. Then Jesus, like father, like son, repeated the same truth. He demonstrated the same truth because Whatever is in the Father is in Jesus. Whatever is in God is in Jesus Christ. Just like whatever is in God, which is in Jesus Christ, is supposed to be in you and I. Then Jesus repeated the same truth when he said in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13, Greater love had no man than this, than a man lay down his life. For his friends. There is no love greater than that. God loved the world. He laid down his begotten son. The son loved the world. He laid down his life for all of us. God who is love. Demonstrated his person. His love. By giving himself to us. Through his son Jesus Christ. Who himself gave him his life. Because of love. When he died on the cross for our sins. If we, who are the, the third generation, as it were, if we are to follow in the examples of our great of our grandfather God and our father Jesus, then we should just continue in the same family uh, 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 precept of love. We must we must demonstrate the love of God that is in us, that is who we are, that has been plant, planted by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We must show love to one another, which is the eternal theme of the fruit of the Spirit. The central theme, the central point, the, the, the glue, that holds the nine fruits of the Spirit is love. Because when you carefully and you studiously observe and, 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 and understand the essence, the manifestations of these nine fruits of the Spirit, the one thread that runs through all of them is love. Love will produce joy. Love brings peace. Love will give you the ability and the enablement to, 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 for long suffering. Love will produce gentleness in you. If, you. if you truly have love in your heart, you'll be as gentle as a dove. Love will enable you to practice goodness without me, me, me messing about. Your faith can even not, your faith will not even work without love. And the Bible said the just shall live by faith. So if you can't live by, if you cannot live outside of faith and your faith cannot work outside of love, just love and your faith will work. You can't be a meek person without the demonstration of love. You cannot produce temperance outside of love. As you can see, the nine fruits of the Spirit, they are held together in a bowl. And that bowl is called love. So when you have all these nine fruits of one Spirit, manifesting in your life. You don't need to convince anybody. You don't need to argue with anybody. 
You don't need to describe yourself to anybody. You don't even need to introduce yourself as a child of God. They will just see by your fruit. They will just know by your deeds. They will just know by the aroma that's coming out of you. They will just know by what is coming from the inside of you. Not the make-believe that you're putting up or the acting. No. The real you will manifest. They will know. People will know that of true God and the Spirit of God lives in you and now is living through you to be a blessing to others. Did you see what Apostle Paul said? He concluded by admonishing us to demonstrate what we profess. He told us, let what you say be replicated in what you do. If we claim that we're children of God, that we're born of his seed, and that his, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us, then we are required. In fact, it is expected, it is demanded of us to produce fruits after our Father God. Because in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, Paul, Apostle Paul said, If we live in the Spirit, let, also, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we claim we're living and we're, our life is driven and directed and, and whatever by the Spirit, then let's see it. No wonder they say, by your fruit, we will know you. You don't need to tell us that you are mango or tangerine or you are banana. We just look at the fruits. We know who you are and what you are. If you are ever in doubt, if you ever wonder whether you are living your life, determined and, and, and commanded and guarded by this, the fruits of the Spirit, just go and read what Apostle Paul said. In fact, go and read the whole of Galatians chapter 5. From verse 1 to the end. You will, you, you, it will be crystal clear. Because in that whole chapter, Apostle Paul was, was comparing the, the flesh versus the spirit. When people were talking about, some people were circumcised, so they are not, those who are not circumcised. And they said, what's your problem? In fact, he went as far as I said, I would I'd rather they cut off whatever needs to be circumcised if that would deliver you from your trouble. There is nothing good that can come out of carnal leaf. Nothing. Because Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 9 from verse, from verse 19 to verse 22. He gave us the, 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 the comparison between what the work of the flesh is, the manifestation, manifestations of the flesh compared to that of the spirit. He said, now the works of the flesh are manifested. I like Apostle Paul's writing because he doesn't, you don't have to go and think, what is he trying to say? No, he will just say it and let you deal with it, with whichever way. He said, now the works of the flesh, they are manifested. How? They are manifested in adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, or drunkenness, reveling, and such like that going on and on. He said, of the which I tell you before, and I'm telling you again now, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. As I close, the manifestations of the fruits of the Spirit is a confirmation that you are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit of God, which is love. And when you walk by the Spirit of God and manifest the fruit thereof, you are guaranteed to inherit the kingdom of God. The 
the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such, there is no law. My prayer tonight is that you and I, we will revisit the essence of who we are. The essence of what we are and what we carry. So that we can bring forth these nine ingredients that, did, that God said in his word are the true resemblance of who he is. May God help us. Thank you so much for being part of tonight's program. I hope you have heard something. And by the way, again, like I said, when we did the last series, I don't know how long this is going to take. But I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. I'm just going to keep scratching it little by little so that at the end of a day, you and I can have the full understanding of what it means to manifest the fruits of the Spirit. And may God help our understanding. Amen. I'll see you again next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.